Friends, let's read the 19th question. A trust fund has 30,000 rupees that must be invested in two different type of bonds. So the first bond will pay 5% interest per year while the second bond pays 7% interest per year. We have to use matrix multiplication and determine how to divide this 30,000 amongst the two types of bonds. And the condition is that in the first part, the trust must obtain an annual interest of 1800 and in the second part, we must get an annual interest of 2000. So let's see how to solve this. So friends, we have to divide this 30,000 into two parts. So let it be divided into X. So the first bond, we are going to invest X amount. And so in the second bond, we are going to invest 30,000 minus X. So the interest here is 5% and the interest here is 7%. So what will be the total interest per annum? It will be 5 upon 100 into the in into the investment which is x and here in the second bond it's going to be 7 upon 100 into 30,000 minus x because that is the investment in this bond. So we have to represent all this in terms of matrix multiplication. So let us have a matrix called the investment matrix where we are going to write the investment in each bond. So my first row first column entry will be the investment in the first bond. That is the 5% interest bond. So how much am I investing in the first bond? I'm, I'm investing X amount. So I'll write X. Now in the first row second column, I will write the investment in the second bond. So what is the investment in the second bond? It's 30,000 minus X. Now this has to be multiplied with the interest matrix. Now the interest matrix should be constructed in such a way that we will be able to multiply it with the investment matrix. The investment matrix is of the order 1 by 2. Now for matrix multiplication, the number of columns of the first matrix should be equal to number of rows of the second matrix. That means my second matrix should have two rows, right? So if it is going to have two rows, then it is better that you have one column over here. So let us have two rows and one column. So this is so this is going to be my investment matrix and here I'm going to write my interest matrix. So the first row first column entry of the interest matrix is going to be 5 upon 100 because how much interest am I getting in the first bond? 5%. Now similarly in the second row first column I will write the interest which I get in the second bond. What is the interest? It is 7 upon 100. Now these two when I multiply what will I get? I will get my total interest interest per annum. So I will get actually so when these two this uh, two and two will go away. So when I multiply these two matrices the order of the resultant matrix will be this will be one by one. So actually there will be only one entry in the uh, product matrix. So that will be nothing but the total annual interest. Now in the first part of the question, this total annual interest is going to be 1800. So what is unknown? If everything we know, what is unknown? We don't know the value of x. So that is what we have to find. So let us do the matrix multiplication. We will have x into 5 upon 100 plus 7 upon 100 into 30,000 minus x. So this is going to be equal to this matrix. So now since this matrix is equal to this matrix, that means the corresponding matrix elements are going to be equal. So let us equate the matrix elements. So we'll get 5x upon 100 plus, let me open up the brackets. So I'll get 21, 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros minus 7x upon 100. Now this is equal to 1800. So I'll take 100 common. So I'll get 5x minus 7x. So I'll get minus 2x. So let me write this first. Minus 2x is equal to 1800. So in the next step, we'll bring the 100 to that side. So we'll get this way is equal to 18 followed by 4 zeros. So, so let us shift the terms on either side and we'll end up with 2x is equal to this term. So my 2x is going to be 30,000 which means my x is going to be 
15,000. So if my X is going to be 15,000, it means I have invested 15,000 in the first bond, that is the 5% interest bond. So how much have I invested in the second bond? That will be 30,000 minus X, which is 30,000 minus 15,000. So again, in this case, I have invested equally in both the bonds. 15,000 in the first bond and the same 15,000 in the second bond also. So, in part B of 19th question, we are given that the total annual interest is going to be 2,000. And again, we have to find how they have invested 30,000 in both the bonds. That is, again, we have to find out X, but here the interest is 2,000. So, let us again do matrix multiplication. So, we get 5 upon 100 times X plus 7 upon 100 times 30,000 minus X this whole thing is going to be equal to this one by one matrix which is 2000. So since these two matrices are equal it means that the corresponding matrix elements are equal. So let's equate it. We will get 5x upon 100 plus this way minus 7x. So it will be very similar to the part A of the 19th question. So This is how we'll get. Only thing is, the, the right hand side is 2000 here. So let me bring the 100 to the other side. Now let us shift the terms. So we'll get 2x is equal to this term minus this term. Be very careful with the zeros. So 2x is going to be 1 followed by four zeros so that means my x is going to be 5000 so that means i'm going to invest 5000 in the first bond so how much am i going to invest in the second bond it will be 30000 minus x which is 30000 minus 5000 that means i'm going to invest 25000 rupees in the second bond Question number 20 is as follows. The bookshop of a particular school has 10 dozen chemistry books, 8 dozen physics books and 10 dozen economic books. And the selling prices are given as 80 rupees, 60 and 40 respectively. We have to find the total amount that the bookshop will receive from selling all the books and we have to use matrix algebra. So let's do this. Friends, how many chemistry books are there? There are going to be 10 dozen chemistry books that is 10 into 12 120 books are from chemistry then the physics books are 8 dozen so 8 12s are 96 and economic books there are going to be again 10 dozen so that is also 120 a very important thing to note here is that we should see that the word dozen is written we should not take it as 10 chemistry books 8 physics books and 10 economic books it's 10 dozen so we should remember to multiply 10 with 12 that is when we will get the actual number of chemistry physics and economic books now we will have a book matrix okay now this book matrix will have the number of chemistry physics and economic books so how will it be arranged i will have one entry as 120 now the other entry will be 96 and 120 so this is my chemistry books this is my physics and this is my economics now this is one way of writing the matrix the other way is this way 120 and then in the next row I write 96 and after that I write 120. So this is my chemistry books, this is physics and this is economics. So if you see this is nothing but a row matrix because there is only one row and this is a column matrix because there is only one column. Now it is totally up to us whether you want to take a row matrix or a column matrix. Now this is the book matrix. Now there is going to be another matrix which is the price matrix. So this will have the selling price of all the three books again it can have it can be either a row matrix or a column matrix so what are the costs what are the selling prices it's 80 60 and 40 so we should always maintain the same order so if the book matrix has the first entry as chemistry second physics and third economics the price matrix should also have 
it in the same order that is the first selling price should be of chemistry then physics then economics because if you jumble the order you will not get the correct answer so this is the price matrix one way of writing it the other way is as a column matrix where you write it in separate rows 80 60 and 40 so this the first entry is chemistry physics and economics now huh? we have to find the total amount that the bookshop receives from selling all the books so we have to get only one quantity which is the total amount that is sold so we are going to get only one value on the right hand side so what should we have on this side on the left hand side we should have two matrices which are multiplied in such a way that you will get only one number as the answer so when is that possible when i have so this one matrix if i take as three by one the other matrix if i have to take it as one by three but what will happen is that the number of rows of the product matrix will become three by three this is what we don't want we want only one value so we have to take the first matrix of order one by three whatever matrix you can take either the price matrix or the book matrix it is totally up to you but the first matrix order has to be one by three the second matrix order has to be three by one why because the number of columns of the first matrix will be equal to number of rows of the second matrix and the product matrix will have only one entry that is one by one this is what we want so whichever matrix you take this is the order in which we have to multiply them so first suppose i am taking the book matrix so my book matrix should have the order one by three that is 120 that is one row and three columns so 120 96 120 so i have to take in this way now the second matrix that is the price matrix should be of the order three by one three rows and one column so which matrix should i take i should take this way 80 60 and 40. so when i multiply these two matrices what will i get i will get a one by one matrix only which will be the total amount of money which i get by selling all the books so let us start multiplying this is of the order one by three and this is of the order three by one so when i multiply I am going to get a 1 by 1 matrix. So it is going to be 120 multiplied by 80 plus 96 multiplied by 60 plus 120 multiplied by 40. That is all. So this is going to stop with only one entry. The order is 1 by 1. So this is equal to nothing but 120 multiplied by 80. We will get it as 9600 plus this when you multiply you will get 5760 plus this when you multiply you will get 4800 so when we add all this we will get 20160 on the right hand side that is when we multiply this these two matrices we will get this as the answer this is the total amount of money we will get by selling all the books now another method is instead of taking first as the book matrix we can take first the price matrix so the price matrix will be like this now the order has to be one by three only whichever matrix you take and the second matrix we can keep as the book matrix which is number of books so this also the order will not change now again when we multiply these two you will see that the way of multi the order of multiplication has only changed nothing else has changed so 80 multiplied by 120 plus 60 multiplied by 96 plus 40 multiplied by 120 so this again when you add you will get the answer as 20160 so rupees 20160 is the answer it is the total amount of money which has been obtained by selling all the books